Seconds away now from the first ever live edition of HHS In Depth, ahead with Dr. Ginder being absent the last few weeks, who has been filling in for him, plus with finals right around the corner, get the need to know study tips to help ace those final exams. The news begins in 60 seconds. Hello, Homestead. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stay standing for a moment of silence. From Homestead Media, this is HHS In-Depth. Yeah, I think the best way to attack hate crimes is by sharing the word. Right now on HHS In Depth, an unfortunate trend sweeping the nation is the rise of hate crimes targeting Asians. You'll see how students at Homestead can help combat this issue. Plus, we're less than a week away from the premiere of the Spring Musical, a year after it was canceled due to the pandemic. You'll see how the cast and crew are preparing for next week's shows of Footloose. Those stories and more straight ahead. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Jenna Lane. And I'm Ashton Hackman. And Jenna, it took a lot for us to get to this moment, but here we are. That's right, Ashton, but I think we're all excited. There has been a recent rise in the number of hate crimes in the U.S. against Asians, whether it's making the news, social media, or just in a conversation. The increase of this trend around the U.S. has become an unavoidable topic. HHS In-Depth reporter Nada Dehook is in now with a story over how Homestead students can help combat this issue. This past Saturday marked the first day of Asian American Pacific Islanders Heritage Month, but Asian culture has been anything but celebrated these past few weeks. According to the CSUSB, the amount of Asian hate crimes in the U.S. has increased by 140 percent, and this number reached 150 percent by 2021. But there are many ways to stop the rise of this hatred. One Homestead graduate, Ye Han Song, takes part in AAJC, an organization that sends the money directly to the individuals who face these hate crimes, while spreading the message of how to combat this kind of discrimination. For so long, we have been known as the model minority. We were known to be quiet and stay down. However, when one of our fellow Asian American brothers or sisters are facing injustice, no matter if that Asian heritage isn't yours, and when we are for each other, we must do it in peace. We must do it in uh, compassion. We need to do it in love. And the biggest part, we need to do it with the vision, we can't just spit, spit out words. We need to organize. We need to take one step at a time and hope that the next generation can carry on that. You've probably seen on social media, a lot of people are reposting pictures now showing the Asian hate crimes going on. Do you think this is a good way to spread the message or is there a better way to help out the Asian community? Yeah, it's kind of like a double-edged sword, you know? It's, uh, there's a, a pros to it, but there's also cons to it. So what I want to encourage is don't just stop there. Social media can only get the word out. However, the word needs to continue. It needs to spread. It needs to go from one person to one person, not just from ear to ear, but from ear to heart. That's when we need to reach out to our organizations, to the government, to people who have the platform to talk about it, to lead it, to help one another. So I truly believe social media can help us, but that shouldn't be our main weapon or our main source of solving this. And whether you're Asian or not, when it comes to advocating against Asian hate crimes, there is a way for everyone to help. This is not a white versus color thing. This is us versus hatred, us versus racism. Injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere, right? That uh, famous quote from Martin Luther King Jr. So if you feel like there's ne there needs to be change, donate not only money-wise, but your time, your word, your thought, your creativity, anything. Uh, I think the best way is to be involved. And after weeks of sharing, discussing, and advocating against Asian hate crimes, they finally got on the national attention necessary to take the next step of action. The Senate came together today to overwhelmingly denounce and tackle hate against Asian Americans. 
On Thursday, April 22nd, the anti-Asian hate bill was passed. But that doesn't mean the fight against these hate crimes is over yet. Now it's time to implement this bill in our local community and spread its message nationally. For HHS In Depth, I'm Nada DeHook. Thank you, Nada. And if you would like to help fight the battle with the Asian community through donation, you can follow the link shown here. Here's a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers on this Friday. The Indiana State Department of Health is reporting an additional 824 cases of COVID-19 and 12 additional deaths. That brings the state's total number of cases to just over 720,000 statewide. In all, nearly 13,000 Hoosiers have died from COVID-19. Here in Allen County, there were 64 new cases and no new additional deaths. Well, by now we've all heard about Dr. Ginder's battle with COVID-19. And while the news is great that he's expected to make a full recovery, have you ever wondered who has been doing the job of Homestead Principal during his absence? HHS in depth reporter Michelle Obiama joins us now to fill us in with the answer. You may have noticed that Homestead's been missing a familiar face in its halls, being that of Dr. Ginder. Many have been wondering who have been taking over his various responsibilities. Learn how in his absence, the administration has been tackling his many duties. We really just basically split them up. Um, a lot of us already had areas, I'm talking about the assistant principals, already had areas that we were overseeing. So I think we just really split up some of the, the things that Dr. Ginder had us do. He kind of handled graduation, so I think a lot of us are taking that on as, as far as something that he usually did. A lot of people are working on graduation because it's such a big task and one that uh, we had little bits and pieces of in the past. Mrs. Bay, Mrs. Summers, Mrs. Lackland, Mr. Clark, and myself are trying to just do little pieces of that. So we meet about it and then, okay, you do this, you do this. One of the things we uh, were doing differently this year is ordering tickets, so we working with the printer, just stuff like that. Not anything difficult, but just trying to make sure we don't screw anything up. Even though Dr. Ginder's absence was unexpected, the administration hasn't run into many obstacles dispersing the new workload. It's, it's been fine because we have uh, a lot of people that are just willing to step up and our, our team is really great. So I think we didn't really miss a beat as far as people trying to fill the gaps. And obviously you don't replace uh, someone like Dr. Ginder. And we know, uh, you know we're looking forward to him coming back. But yeah, it, it hasn't been a big deal as far as like, oh boy, I feel so overworked now. But yeah, I think I think everybody's just spreading the load around and it's been good. Helping out with all of Dr. Ginder's administrative tasks is definitely a team effort, but with all of our diligent assistant principals, no job is too big. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Michelle Biama. All right, thank you, Michelle. Today marks the end of Teacher Appreciation Week, and as we head to a commercial break, here is a message to our faculty from the students of Homestead. We'll be right back. Teachers are superheroes because. Teachers are superheroes because. Teachers are superheroes because. 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 They provide a stepping stone for us to be better individuals in life. They always go out of their way to make sure we understand the content we're learning in class. Your kindness and your understanding makes you a superhero every day. They come to school with a positive attitude. They give me unconditional support. No matter what they're going through, they show up to school motivate us, and encourage us to do our best. They're always there to listen when I need to talk. They take time out of their days to make sure that we are academically successful. They're really nice and they help me understand what's going on. They come to school, they make us very happy, and they make the class a much better place for us students. Thank you. Thank you, teachers. Thank you. Thank you, teachers. 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 Thank you so much, teachers. You're watching HHS In Depth with Jenna Lane and Ashton Hackman. Welcome back. Southwest Allen County Schools Superintendent Dr. Phil Downs has officially retired from the district. Downs released an email Wednesday thanking the community for their trust and support in what he called the honor and privilege of serving as the head of the district. Dr. Downs announced in January that he would be retiring in December, but the retirement date arrived sooner after taking a position with Trine University. The Sachs School Board is still in the process of selecting the next superintendent. It's your move. Chess Club will take their yearbook photo at 2.40 next Thursday, May 13th, and then have a meeting immediately after the photo shoot. 
Spanish and French clubs will also have their yearbook club photo taken together after school next Thursday, May 13th at 2.45 p.m. Catan Club meets Thursday next week. That's Thursday, May 13th. This is a change from their normal day and they hope to see you then. Auditions for the Homestead Color Guard will take place on Tuesday, May 17th through Friday, May 20th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. in the main gym. These auditions are open to all Homestead students, grades 9 through 12, and there is no experience necessary to try out. The Homestead Band and Color Guard programs are consistent state and national finalists and are excited to welcome new faces for the 2021-22 school year. If you have questions or are interested, please contact Mr. Warfield or go to the band room, room 400. Has it been over a month since you dropped off your Dell laptop repair? Please stop in to check on it, as they have laptops that have been waiting for several months to be picked up. Also, if you have reported the cord damage on your Dell charger, replacements are now ready for pickup. Get out to room 301 anytime between 7.15 a.m. and 3 p.m. Student government petitions to run for office next year are due to Mrs. Moss today by 2.35 p.m. Also, senior scholarship essays or poems are due by the end of the day on Monday, May 10th to Mr. Sher Sherman in Student Services. These scholarship funds are provided by your student government and are guaranteed to be won by Homestead seniors. Seniors, tell your parents it's time to purchase your senior ad. Simply go to yearbooksforever.com and buy yours before the deadline. Also, any student wishing to purchase a yearbook can also do that at yearbooksforever.com. Hurry up and get yours before the May 30th deadline. Cartoon Club meets this and every Monday. Come out to Mrs. Hepner's room, room 123, and join the fun as they watch a wide variety of cartoons. This week they will be watching SpongeBob SquarePants. Snacks and drinks will be provided. Attention club sponsors, Club Picture Day is May 13th after school. Please sign up for a time slot to get your club's picture taken and put in the yearbook. See the announcement from Mrs. Breen for the Google sign-up sheet. The Biomedical Science Club will host Dr. Saeed Ibrahim, an interventional radiologist, on Monday, May 10th from 2.45 to 3.30 in room 215. This will be their last meeting of the school year. Check the homepage of the Biomed Club Canvas page for the Zoom link if you are not in attendance at school. If you have questions, email Mrs. Behrens. Also plan to take the club picture for the yearbook. If you would like to be a part of this picture, please meet in the hallway outside the auditorium on May 13th at 2.45 p.m. Get out to Environmental Club's last meeting of the year on Monday after school in Mrs. Merkling's room, room 206. They will reflect on their year and celebrate. If the weather is nice, they plan to spend their time out at the Environmental Center, so please dress accordingly that day. Tomorrow morning, the varsity baseball team plays Snyder in a doubleheader at Huntington University. First pitch is scheduled for 10 a.m. It is also senior day for the baseball team, so get out and show your support for our 12 seniors and the entire baseball team. There will be a short ceremony honoring the seniors prior to the start of Game 1. Interact Club meets every Wednesday at 2.45 in the community room. For questions, please contact Mrs. Dean at the email shown here. History Club will be making a brief comeback this month to help celebrate the end of a historic school year. On Thursday, May 13th, Ms. Slesak will be showing the movie Troy, and on Wednesday, May 19th, she will be showing Forrest Gump. Both movies will start at 6.30 p.m. in room 303. If you are interested in attending either film, stop by Ms. Slesak's room, room 715, this week or next for a permission slip. If you do not have a signed permission slip from a parent, you will be unable to attend. Feel free to bring your own snacks to the movie, but please Please note that social distancing will be required. A few weeks ago, the Homestead academic team competed in the area competition of Academic Super Bowl. While not reaching their goal of qualifying for the state competition, the team performed very well and beat Carroll in both the math and social studies competition. Congratulations to the team. Seniors, if you'd like to have photos of you and your friends in the graduation video this year, please send your high-resolution photos to hjessindepth at gmail.com. Please only include seniors in the photos you send, and I am making the video this year, and if no one sends in photos, I will scan from elementary yearbooks, so trust me, you don't want that to happen. Well, one year ago, Homestead had to cancel many spring activities and events due to the COVID-19 pandemic, including the annual musical. This year, the students making up the cast and crew are back and excited for the opportunity to perform again. HHS In Depth reporter Cora Shaw is in now to tell us all about the 2021 spring musical, Footloose. The musical is underway as students prepare for their upcoming performances in front of a live audience. Footloose is action-packed and comes with an interesting storyline. 
Footloose is a musical about a small town who has banned dancing because of a tragic accident. My character is Ariel and she's the minister's daughter and she's very rebellious and so she doesn't necessarily agree with this law. So when the new kid from Chicago comes into town, she's very intrigued with his ways. And that's my character, Ren. He comes in and he tries to convince the whole town that dancing is a good thing and Dancing is what everybody should strive for, basically, and just to have fun. Despite the obvious obstacles, the cast has loved their time performing and creating a show that everybody can enjoy. The mask wearing can get annoying at some times, especially when you're singing and dancing on stage, but I think we're adapting to it pretty well. It's really nice to perform with everybody on stage, especially since it's been a weird year. I've really learned how to express myself a little bit more. I think I have to, having such a big role. I think people should come see the musical because it's it's not like your typical high school musical. I feel like Footloose kind of still has a connection to high school students today almost and that it's something they could connect to or feel and it's just an overall like fun atmosphere and fun musical to watch and so I feel like people should come see it and see all the hard work that we've been putting in for the past few weeks and it would just be a great experience overall. Each performer gets two tickets per performance, so if you want to see Footloose, contact a cast member for more information. Reporting for HHS In-Depth, I'm Cora Shaw. All right, thank you, Cora. Performances for the musical will be held next Thursday and Friday at 7 p.m. and on Saturday, May 15th at 2 p.m. and again at 7 p.m. Well, it's hard to believe it, but it's been quite a while since we've had traditional finals here at Homestead, and some students have yet to take one at all. HHS in Depth reporter Nisha Lalaria joins us now to give us some tips to be best prepared for those finals, which start two weeks from today. With the final just a couple weeks away, many of Homestead's academic classes are wrapping up new content. Spartans are now entering the time in the semester when review is becoming a big part of class time. The stress of finals usually weighs heavily on the shoulders of many students, which leaves the question of how should students break down the content they have learned. Study with classmates. Utilize tools on your computer like Zoom to connect with friends to ask questions. If an after-school study session exists, take some time to ask any additional questions you did not mention in class. And finally, find the best way to study. Whether it's with your friends, by yourself, or making flashcards on Quizlet, Personalizing your study routine should result in success. With the first final date coming up in just two weeks, let's finish this semester off smart and strong. Reporting for HHS In-Depth, I'm Nisha Lalaria. All right, thank you, Nisha. Carly Flanagan joins us now, and guys, we got spoiled with great weather last weekend. And Carly, will the weather be warming up anytime soon? Well, temperatures won't be too bad over the next several days with highs in the upper 50s to lower 60s. Unfortunately, we won't have highs break 70 like we saw last weekend until at least late next week. We had a bit of fog cover the area this morning, but that has since lifted and we're clear now. The way things stand outside currently, we're seeing temperatures on the chillier side as we're sitting at 49 right now. But thankfully, this morning's fog is gone and your commute home won't be affected. However, there is a slight chance you could see some rain right after school, but things will clear up later this evening. Over the next several hours, temperatures will remain fairly constant but not getting past the upper 50s. And we remain dry tomorrow with a chance of rain on Sunday. The rest of the next week doesn't look too bad either. I'll fill you in on that in the extended forecast a little later in the show. All right, thank you, Carly. Time now, 11.33. Next in sports, another busy week as all of our athletic teams are in full gear. I'll break down the week it was when we come back. Stay with us. This is your weekly installment of Tech Tips, a helpful short series over assisting students and staff through issues in technology. With only a couple weeks left of school, it's time to start getting ready to turn your computers in. To make organization nice and easy, we'll talk about wrapping the charging cable. Just follow the video shown and try it a couple times to make it much easier and faster for students to turn them in, and in turn, making the process much faster. That's all for this installment of Tech Tips. Tune in next week for more helpful information about using technology in Southwest Down County Schools.
Welcome back. Even with the colder and rainy weather, the Homestead sports teams had another busy week as we wind down the spring sports season. Big week for our girls' tennis team. On Monday, the three singles players of Olivia Creech, Ellie Cook, and Layla Kelly all won their matches, and the two doubles teams of Morgan Render and Madison Zitlaw, as well as Anna Topmiller and Regan Zitlaw, also won their matches, giving them a clean 5-0 win over the Leo Lions. They then came back on Wednesday to also sweep Canterbury 5-0, with Jenna Lewis getting in a win in the single number two singles. Their match with Bishop Dwinger was canceled last night due to the rain. The ladies have the weekend off, but will be back in action on Monday at home where they'll take on Adams Central. The Homestead boys golf team beat Huntington North 163 to 187 at Chestnut Hills this past Monday. Ethan Shrek, Cade Cobbler, Jack Berta, Carson Cave, Jack Alverson, and Justin Hatter all posted nine hole scores in the 40s with the top four being used to determine the winners. The boys golf team lost against Columbia City yesterday. They will be back at the links tomorrow as they travel to Westfield at 1 p.m. In baseball action, the Spartans got a big walk-off win over rival Carroll Tuesday night down at the Ash Center. The Spartans trailed by one heading into the bottom of the seventh inning and rallied behind a pair of Carter Matheson and Brennan Wiegert base hits and Wiegert scored the winning run on a pass ball. Caleb Colpin led the way with two hits and two RBIs while Wiegert also had two RBIs. The Spartans came back Wednesday night and lost a heartbreaker to Bishop Dwinger 11-10. Carter Matheson drilled his 13th home run of the year in that game but his grand slam wasn't enough as Homestead fell 15-4 on the season. The baseball team is back in action tomorrow morning at Huntington University as they take on Snyder in a doubleheader where all 12 seniors will be honored before the game. What a hit. The boys and girls track and field teams took on Carroll this past Wednesday with the girls team taking out the Chargers while the boys fell just short. Both teams are back in action tonight down in Indy. And a little off-season news for football next fall. The IHSA announced the realignment for sectionals based on the tournament success factor. And there's been a major change in Homestead's Class 6A sectional. Starting next year, Snyder will move back down a class to 5A. And Homestead, Carroll, and Warsaw will make up a three-team sectional in Class 6A, meaning one team will get a bye and automatically advance to the sectional championship game. The IHSA announced that this alignment would be a one-year occurrence. Good luck to all sports teams this weekend, including tonight as our unified track team heads to Goshen and our boys and girls track and field teams head to Indy for a meet at Pike High School. And as we head to break, here is a look behind the scenes at the crew working to pull off today's live show. Carly will be back with a check of the seven day forecast after this. Next week on HHS In Depth, see how Homestead did in this year's IESB state competition. Although the competition was virtual this year, the students in broadcasting still got the chance to submit their best work and compete against other Indiana high schools. Hear all of the results of the 2021 IASB Awards next week. Get out and enjoy the weather tomorrow. We'll see some sunshine, but highs will be in the upper 50s. Rain returns Sunday, so don't make plans to celebrate Mother's Day outside this year. But after that, we are dry with sunshine for the entire week. Highs in the upper 50s on Monday, all the way to the upper 60s by the end of next week. All right, thank you, Carly. And thank you for watching today on the first ever live show. We're back again next week. Have a great weekend, everybody.